16 yards, Diana model 34, 177 caliber, five shots. Hello and welcome to another episode, Air Gun Reviews and Hunting Channel. Today, we're gonna to take a look at one of my springers that I have, and it's the RWS 34 in 177 caliber. On top is a UTG 416 by 40 AO on the butt butt pad from the factory it comes with a solid hard butt pad but I went ahead and changed it out and put a rubber recoil pad to help with the recoil now I did put in a Jim McCurry JM 12 pound spring kit. Remove the sights and front and rear sights. And I added this uh, automotive rubber hose. So when I tap the barrel to go ahead and cock the gun, I'm not just slapping metal with my hand so that it provides a little cushion. Now, some information about Diana. Now, I, I don't know this whole story, you know, I'm kind of confused myself here because I thought I had a Diana uh, Model 34 classic, but in, in all actuality, it's a RWS. 34 classic it's made in germany uh just like the 
Beeman R7 and the Virock HW30. They're both the same guns. It's the same scenario with the RWS and the Diana 34. This one d does sport a uh, T06 trigger, which is uh, fully adjustable. Uh, in my opinion, I, I do have uh, a couple of Virock Springers and boy, I, it's hard for me to choose which uh, trigger I like better, the T06 or the Virock record trigger. Uh, I, I think I tend to lean may, maybe towards uh, the RWS 34 trigger. It just seems to, I don't know, break clean, cleaner than the record trigger in my, in my opinion now. So anyways, uh, I thought I had a Diana, but apparently it's a RWS uh, 34. It's the same as a Diana, but anyways, Diana has been in business for over 125 years. Uh, the gun's favorite pellet is a 7.9 grain Crossman box. Average uh, FPS, now this is with a 12 foot pound spring, seven, 776 feet per second, extreme spread, 11, standard deviation of three. The wood is beech wood. There's no stippling on the gun, on the bit or the stock itself. It's just a uh, nice looking plain wood. With a few modifications, like I, you know, like I said earlier, with the rubber butt pad, cocking effort when it was stock was around 30 uh, foot pounds, 30 pounds, and with the 12 foot pound spring, around 22, maybe 25 uh, pounds cocking effort. The gun weighs uh, without the scope 7.5 pounds. The overall length is 45 inches. The barrel length is 19 inches. Now, I did have a problem with this gun and I, I couldn't, it took me a while to figure out what was actually going on with this gun. I, I thought for, you know, I was starting to believe that maybe I had a barrel issue. And it's funny because uh, whenever I shot groups with the gun, some of the groups are, you know, they're, the pellets are touching. Other times I get like a wild flyer and, and there's, with no explanation. So I was starting to get frustrated because I, I've got, a, you know, quite a few uh, selection of uh, 177 pellets. And, uh, you know, darn near went through all my pellets trying to figure out, you know, if I, you know, had the right pellet. Well, the closest one was a 10.34 GSBs. It likes the Crossman 10.5. It also likes the 7.9 uh, Crossman. I eat the Crossman in the box, of course. And uh, what I initially discovered is when, when you open the breech and load the pellet in the breech, you push the pellet in, and of course, naturally you, you uh, sh shut it, close, and then you uh, get your sight picture and fire. And for, I don't know, a couple of days ago, I was uh, shooting this gun, getting ready for this review, and I decided after I loaded the pellet, I decided, I said, hmm, let me check to see if maybe the pellets might be clipping when I close the breech. And that's what it was. It was clipping. The pellet was not sitting completely flush. So I had to take my Dremel tool and a uh, carbon, uh, tungsten carbide uh, grinding bit and just you know, made the hole a little bit wider so that the pellet would sit flush and I don't have to worry about it anymore clipping 
the skirt on the pellet and causing accuracy issues. So if you do have a springer and you're wondering if why, you know, if, it, if it's not the scope, if you rule out, you know, the, the, the scope is fine and you try a, a bunch of different pellets, you know, if it's a brake barrel and load the pellet, close the breech and then reopen it and see if the skirt on the pellet is damaged by closing it. If it is, well, you can do one of two things. You can either send it back or like I did, I just took a Dremel tool and a, you know, a, a, what is it, tungsten carbide uh, grinding bit and just kind of open up the opening of the hole so that the pellet will sit flush and when you close the breech, it won't damage the skirt. Just uh, a tip for you guys out there with springers, you know, that's a, a tip I'm uh, sharing because I'm all about sharing. Sharing is caring. So that's what I'm doing. Now, here are the groups that I shot. Now, granted, it's not out to my 30 yards, but this was the other day. And with the exception of this one right here, I'm going to say that was me pulling the, the trigger, but there's four shots that is covered by a dime at 16 yards. Now that is pretty doggone good, in my opinion. And I have no doubt that I can shoot the same at 30 yards. This is, here's one right here, a dime even covers it. Or can go with a nickel. Well, nickel covers everything. But as you can see, that's a very small bird. And if that was a, a real bird, this uh, 34 would get the job done. But I say that's a pretty good, pretty good group right there out of this gun. Now, this is uh, Diana's uh, best-selling gun spring gun that they uh, have and I can't tell you the age you know I try to look at that information up you know as far as uh, when was the first uh, model 34 produced I don't know I, I tried looking that information up but I can certainly le leave a link in the description if you're interested in one of these uh, Pyramid Air has uh, refurb the uh, Diana 34s and I think that these guns are one heck of a gun to own and have in your collection if you know how to shoot them you know it's got you gotta have that special hold uh, artillery hold you know once you master that then uh you're in good shape well I got two more springers that I own and that will be the end of my uh, collection of Springers that I have. I have a Diana 240 I gotta do a, a review on, and I have a, one of my favorites is uh, Viroc HW97K in a blue synthetic stock 177. I did some mods to that as well. So those will be coming up. I plan on doing a, a review here very shortly on the gun that was used last year at the Pyramid Air Cup at the 100 yard uh, event, shooting event, bench rest, 100 yard bench rest. And I'm gonna show you that and do a review on that particular gun and uh, that's it for now. Hope, hope you all are doing, uh, you and your family are doing well in light of this uh, coronavirus outbreak. But I'm doing just fine. My family's doing fine. Hope everybody out there in YouTube land are uh, adhering to 
the governor's request that everybody uh, stay home. That's what I'm doing so far. But I think I might just sneak out and go to a farm information and uh, get some of that taken care of. I did some uh, video early this morning. Got me a couple startlings up that were trying to build a nest in my birdhouse. So I took one of my brake barrel and had mounted a side shop adapter on it. So I slid everything on there and uh, I captured that on, on film. So anyways, shoot straight and may your pellet hit the target. We'll see you on the next episode of Air Gun Reviews and Hunting Channel. See ya.